that one lakh invested will become seventeen lakh forty four thousand nine forty. There is a very simple rule which is known as the fifty thirty twenty rule. Seven percent return that too tax free. Hey folks, C R Achana Ranade here, and I welcome you all to an episode in Master Your Money. Today we are going to start off with an episode which is totally intended for a beginner. There are so many people who feel that yes, I think this is the right time. Now I should start my financial journey. But then the question is, how do I start it? What should be my first step of starting the financial journey? Before I talk about the important steps in your financial journey, let me tell you a very nice story which I happened to read over the internet. There was a king, and uh, he was fond of playing chess. And whenever any person used to pass through his town, he used to invite that person and used to challenge him in the game of chess. So there, once uh, a person was passing by. Actually, it was Lord Krishna, and uh, he he had disguised himself as a normal person, and he invited him for the game of chess. The king asked the person that, "What do you want? If if you defeat me, what would be your reward?" So Lord Krishna said that I'll just, I just want a very little grains of rice. That will be my reward. That's it. But I'll tell you how to give that reward to me. The methodology I will tell you. He said, fantastic. Even if he loses, then he has to pay just few grains of rice. It was nothing for that king. The game of chess started, and uh, it was a very big shock for the king because that normal person had defeated the king. And we know who the normal person was. It was Lord Krishna. Now Lord Krishna said that now that I have won the game, now you have to give me that those grains of rice. But understand how? Lord Krishna said that in the first square of the chess board, you have to place one grain of rice. Okay. In the second square, you have to place two grains of rice. In the third square, you have to place four grains of rice. In the fourth square, you have to place eight grains of rice. So I hope you are understanding what is the pattern, what is the methodology of placing those grains of rice. So it is nothing but one grain of rice becomes two, two become four, four become eight. This is nothing but what? This is nothing but compounding. So if you invest, if you place some amount of money at the beginning of your career, it would grow. Exponentially. Now, just for your knowledge, I hope you you are aware that there are almost 64 squares on the chessboard. So you can imagine by the end of 60 64th square, what could have happened? In fact, the king was shocked. Somewhere in between only, he was not able to place those grains of rice because that number was crossing 10 lakh grains of rice. So I hope you have understood the importance of compounding. A small step at the beginning would lead great returns. in the future and no wonder why compounding is called as the eighth wonder of the world so why did i call compounding as the eighth wonder of the world for that let's take a practical example now let's come out from the kings and queens era to the present era so assume that i had invested 1 lakh rupees today and assume that the rate of return is 10% i know you will not get 10% in fd right now but just as an example for simple math purpose so now what i'm going to do i'm going to compare simple interest versus compounded interest so here you can see at the end of year 1 i'll get 1 lakh 10000 rupees very normal simple uh, mathematics right if it is compound interest also you will get 1 lakh 10000 rupees so at the end of year 1 there is no difference at all let's see what happens at the end of year 2 at the end of year 2 i'll be getting 1 lakh 20000 rupees how i hope everyone understood 1 lakh you got 10000 in the first year 10000 in the second year that's how 1 lakh 20000 But in the year two, here you can see that it's one lakh twenty one thousand. Now, how did this happen? Because if I'm talking about compounded interest, how much was the principal at the start of year two? At the start of year two, it was not one lakh; it was one lakh ten thousand. So it is as simple as this. Assume that you have a, a vessel of milk, and you have some malai on that. So if you're also including malai, then malai on malai is compounding. But every time if you're removing that malai, you have only milk left. That is like simple interest. Okay, so if you are checking in year two, there's a difference of only one thousand. In year three, difference is only of three thousand. In year four, difference is only of six thousand. But if you check till the end, at the end of thirtieth year, if you don't remove the malai, if you keep that malai in the vessel itself and keep on adding more and more, how much will happen at the end of thirty years? That one lakh invested will become seventeen lakh forty four thousand nine forty. 
but had you removed that malai had you taken it only to simple interest it could have become only 4 lakh at the end of 30th year i hope you have understood the importance of compounding versus simple interest if you if you make an fd and if you remove the interest and reinvest only the principal amount what is that that is simple interest if you make an fd you get interest and you don't remove the interest you the new fd that you make is principal plus interest then it is what then it is compounding interest okay so i hope you have understood the base thumb rule of compounding whatever interest you are getting don't withdraw reinvest that that is how you will get the compounding effect but then there are many people who will give me excuses ma'am you don't have money only you don't have that much saving only how to do that so i'll tell you a magic formula how to ensure that you are saving the appropriate amount of money how to save that's a very simple and a very apt solution that i'm going to give you right now in third standard second standard your teacher might have taught you the formula for saving and what is the formula income minus expenditure is equal to saving that's a very normal savings formula but the magic formula comes like this it's income minus saving is equal to your expense means what you'll say that you have just changed the lhs and rhs no it's not that it's the mentality that has been changed the mentality is that whenever you get your income you'll get that sweet message your account has been credited by rupees whatever that sweet message you're going to get right but then from that you have to immediately take out some money that is going to be your saving okay whatever is left is going to be your disposable income that is the money that you are going to spend so if you have that discipline you remove whatever you have targeted as you are saving right whenever you get your income that is when your savings discipline will be built and that is when your expenses discipline will start 